Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today we're celebrating the anniversary of Gangnam Style hitting 2 billion views on YouTube, the first ever YouTube video to do so. I think it's around 5 or 6 billion now, I think just over 5, which is a lot of views. Now, what's the significance of this? Well, musically... Um, it was a song that was sort of destined to be a hit. It was simple. It had a catchy refrain. It had a danceable beat. It had a lovable artist, Psy, P-S-Y is the spelling. Um, it had an iconic music video. So it had all of the elements except one. Most of it was sung um, and rapped in Korean, not exactly a formula for mainstream success on the U.S. charts and the wider Western uh, music scene where English lyrics, whether sung or rapped, have been dominant for almost since the beginning of the modern music industry itself, frankly. Now, there were important antecedents to this. There have been songs that have been hits that weren't sung in English, and there have been songs that weren't sung at all. There have been instrumental hits. Now, record labels tend to be very cowardly. If something's successful, they want to replicate it, even though uh, every time you replicate something, its quality tends to diminish artistically and in terms of analog sound production, uh, interestingly enough. So there might be a metaphor in there somewhere. But there have been um, a number of hits that have defied uh, the record labels who don't really like releasing singles or promoting hits that are instrumental. You have white out by the safaris you have one of my favorites uh green onion by booker t and the mgs another one of my favorites classical gas by mason williams tequila by the champs really good frankenstein johnny winter everybody loves that song jessica by the allman brothers dickie betts we recently said goodbye to a wonderful <clears throat> wonderful artist he soul sacrifice by santana some would say the best performance at woodstock captured on film of course that was a hit apache by the shadows that was a big hit at least in the uk um and the list can go on um uh, the Baby Elephant Walk, for instance, by Henry Mancini, iconic. So those were examples of chances the record labels took, sometimes kicking and screaming with instrumental hits. And then, of course, there were hits that weren't in English. There was La Bamba by Richie Valens, who would have almost certainly had more success if he didn't die on the day the music died, along with Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper. Um, there were um, there was, of course, the Macarena in the 90s, which was huge huge and there are some other instances but never korean with spanish you can at least say well there's a significant spanish-speaking population uh in the u.s and of course mexico as the neighbor of the u.s it would only make sense that if you're going to have a non-english hit on u.s radio it's probably going to be sung in spanish logical enough but Korean, even though there has been a very growing Korean population in the U.S. since the second half of the 20th century, it's just not a language that most non-Korean Americans could even recognize, let alone speak. But none of this, none of this stopped Gangnam Style from becoming a huge hit. And it was one that succeeded behind the backs of the record labels, which is something I really like, because it was YouTube and social media virality, which made this song go huge in the US and huge globally. Now, this is important to me for a lot of reasons, because it shows that the record companies underestimated the intelligence and curiosity of the average music listener. The average music listener doesn't get freaked out if they hear a song that isn't in their language. But what it does mean is that the overall feel needs to be very compelling. For instance, you could have a very boring song, but if it's got really transgressive or beautiful or controversial lyrics, people will listen. If you take that component away and the lyrics become a sound rather than a message, it's going to need to have something else behind it. And of course, Gangnam Style does have some English lyrics, not particularly uh, unique ones. Oh, sexy lady, the word style itself, but it's it's 
definitely within that K-pop vein where it's rapped or sung in Korean and then with a few English words sprinkled in because, of course, the English language does have an influence in Korea and that's derived from the large American military presence that has been in South Korea since the 1950s. Interesting little tidbit there. Uh, but the record labels would have probably never released a song like this and promoted it to US or other Western non-Korean audiences. But this just shows you that people are not afraid to take chances. People are not afraid to hum along or even try to sing along with words that they don't quite understand. I can guarantee you that before the song, no one really knew what Gagnam meant. People understood that this is a part of Korea, a sort of stylish type of district, apparently, and people felt the vibe. They got curious, and curiosity is very important if art of any kind, whether popular, avant-garde, or high, is going to is going to do things for people. And I think that this really helped open up the door to many non-English speaking records uh, to audiences from around the world because it showed that this uh, that the gatekeepers of the music industry can no longer tell people what's cool, what's not, what's fun, and what's not. And when you look at the Spotify charts today, you will see that on an international level, including of course the US, uh, you're seeing a lot of music that's either sung in languages other than English or that borrows a lot from other cultures. Not only do you see a lot of Latin rhythms and Spanish in the Spotify charts, you see a lot of Arabic rhythms. You even hear some languages from West Asia, Arabic and others. And again, this could have happened a long time ago, but the gatekeepers were afraid. They were afraid that if you weren't able to understand every lyric, um, then um, it wouldn't sell. And when I suppose maybe when people started mumbling the lyrics, people thought, well, might as well be a language I don't understand. So maybe there's something to that too. So it's things like this that prove that the music industry shouldn't underestimate the audience. People always want something new and novel, and this can often inspire new trends. So salute to Sai and to Gangnam Style. He changed YouTube, changed the way people thought about the possibilities of pop music and in doing so opened up the doors to many, not just fellow Korean artists, but frankly artists from many parts of the world. Like, subscribe. We will see you next time. Take care.